Hello and welcome back to Let's Play Adam. I'm here with Spring at Dawn, and I figured out how to lockpick. So what you want to do is take your left mouse button and hold it, and it brings up a skill wheel. Bottle with water, gunpowder, and a log. Cool. And I got some experience for it. Uh, I'm actually... Oh, what is this? The stone in front of you looks like an ordinary, unassuming rock. Big and clearly heavy. It's one of the... It's one of many in this rocky land. There's one detail that makes it stand out. Someone's cut on cut on the initials BS. I try to move the rock by myself, because I am very strong. Make an effort and finally move the heavy rock to the side. <laughs> that was hard. Piece of shield. Looks like a piece of an old shield seems valuable, so it's better to hold on to it. Boris Zveklov's journal? Is that the guy that disappeared? That's a lot of words. Last will and confession of the so-called museum curator, Boris Zvetlov. Zveklov, written in with utter self-hatred by his own hand. A shame I bring, on my, bring to my grave. A piece of knowledge no alcohol in the world could wash away. The fact that I had one job, one job in the whole world, to protect a priceless relic from history's shocking grasp. I failed at it. No use denying this. I failed. And misery is my only companion. I was still naive. The day whose the day those awful atomic bombs started falling all over the country, thinking my town, Krasno's and many Krasno, that's what I was supposed to call it. Krasno was next in the line for nuclear slaughter. I packed my things and ran with my secretary and companion, Borya. But not before being not before taking as many objects of historical value from the local museum I worked at as I could carry. Not like a marauder, but as a keeper. Not to pawn off somewhere, but to save. But did I do that? Did I save those fabulous relics? The mummified dog paw of St. Christopher? The amber tripod? The sword of Vasily the Peacemaker? The shield of Count Ryevsky? Alas, I lost them all to poverty, to hunger, to my newly found drinking habit. I held onto the shield the most, it being the symbol of my most beloved Krasno, from the days it was still called Igorgrad. I lost it I lost it last. A quarter of the shield I pawned to a man tending a moonshiner's den called the Drunken Lair. Another quarter I give to my poor friend Borya, who will bury me when my time will come. He will keep it as a reminder of his foolish friend, and our hideout in a mysterious cave. The third quarter I used in exchange for our life, when a bunch of bandits from the eastern camp assaulted us on the road. The last quarter I kept, to one day be buried with me. That way at least it will survive the tides of time. Dear reader, whether an archaeologist from some distant future, or a mere grave robber, please do not let my legacy die completely. Keep this shield fragment. Find its brethren, make it whole again. This is my final wish. Farewell. Boris Svet... Whatever. Svet... Svet... Sveklov. Interesting. Alright, I'm gonna go back this way. I wanna go open up that crate that I didn't lockpick previously. Cause I mean, I have things I can barter. That would be great. Did the game crash? Nope, okay. It got weirdly quiet when I did that. So I don't know... I guess I'm gonna go this way? I think this is the starting area, right? It is not. All right, screw it. I don't worry about the crate then. Let's we'll go back to the town, talk to everybody, get quests, maybe get equipment. There's a tunnel over there. How big is this map? It's obviously not everything. That's bunker three seventeen. All right, let's get in here and talk to this guy, I guess. Before he stands a thin, middle-aged man, his bony face blooms with a slightly forced smile when he notices you. Good day, good day. For your perusal, guns of all kinds. Pre-war, hot off the workbench. Rifles, shotguns, and pistols from the best gunsmiths of the wastes. All my weapons are of the highest quality. If it explodes in your hands, you your money back guaranteed. 
Hey, how about a discount since I'm new in town? Sorry, friend. Our price is already the best in the wastes. If you don't want to buy anything, then don't. But I can't slash my prices any further. That's too bad. Well, worth a try. Uh, yeah, let's see what you got. I mean, I don't have any money, right? He doesn't even have any guns. Alright, so... This is the money, I think, right? Love to tinker with it. This is worth seven rubles. I don't know what like what of these are gonna be valuable. I'm gonna hold it to the journal, I think. So this is worth sixteen. And the brick is a melee weapon. So you can have that. I'm never gonna use these toadstool. Well no, in case we need it for crafting. So I'm not really gonna craft. See, I really just need this. I want a melee weapon. Uh, let's ask some questions. The trader seems a bit underwhelmed, but keeps a smile, in case you'd still like to buy something. I'm listening. Uh, how's business? It's fair. You must know that everyone in the waste needs weapons. They're invaluable. Sure, one could run around out there with a shiv, but how far is someone like that going to make it? I'll tell you. As far as the nearest tavern, where the local peasants will bash their they're scolding with shovels, or to the nearest ditch, where the wild hounds will finish them off. So how does one avoid that sad fate? By purchasing a quality firearm. Where one, And where might one purchase an item of such quality? Why, right here, of course. Feel free to check out my math on that one. He doesn't have any guns in his inventory. Alright, I'm gonna ask something else. Now tell me about yourself. What's there to tell? Before I came to this village, I worked in a large city to the south of here. You know, Krasno? It's quite the city. The real center of the region. Uh, so many people there. Life is bustling. After I got tired of that, I came here for some fresh air. And that's that. You pick up on the regret in his voice when he speaks. Clearly there's something he's not telling you. I know there's something you're leaving out. Maybe I can help you if you tell me about what's bothering you. Oh fine. Why bother hiding it anymore? You see, I was a big man in Krasno. I was a weapons, I was a weapons ammo, alcohol, and tobacco dealer. I had warehouses in the city. I was part of the Chamber of Commerce. I had a family, a wife, and a son. The traitor, the traitor looks through you, his sight aimed into the past. He succeeded at finding the genuine man beneath the guise of smiling professional salesman. Well, most big men have many enemies, and I had some too, it turned out. How else could I explain the fires at my warehouses, the attacks on my caravans, and the fact that someone tried to break into my house? And, it, and even after that, the troubles kept on coming. My workers started to leave me for different reasons. My guards said they wouldn't follow my caravans anymore. Some valuable contracts failed to deliver. Everything indicated someone was out to get me. No, worse, someone was out to destroy me. I wanted to learn more about my nemesis. I hired some sleuths, but whoever was behind this operation was too tricky for them to find. Eventually I started drinking. You see the traitor ball his fists up hard, like he's trying to suppress some strong emotions. The wife left me, took my son with her. I understand why, but, well, after that, someone turned into a, turned in an anonymous tip about me, claimed I was some sort of moral degenerate and ashamed to the Chamber of Commerce of Krasno, that I worked with thugs and antisocial elements and all that. The vote was swift, and I was escorted out of the city, and now here I am, just managed to get back on my feet recently. Oh, do you suspect anyone specific is behind your troubles? It could have been anyone. Like I said, big men have many enemies. But don't listen to me, friend. What am I even doing, pouring my heart out to a client? That's very unprofessional. The traitor craw coughs uncomfortably and straightens the sides of his dusty jacket. Hold on there. Unprofessional. Maybe I can help. Well, it is possible. I see you're not a stupid man. You know people. Maybe the road takes you to Krasno one day. Maybe then you could you would work on re-electing me into the Chamber of Commerce. Because, as clear and lovely as the areas in these parts, trading with village militia and some derelicts is very tiring. And paying fees to the local criminals is even worse. Agreed. If I get to Krasno, I'll deal with your dilemma. And what will I get in return? Well, if everything goes well and I, and I get my position back, I won't deny you any kindness. I'll pay you so much money. I'll pay you so much. Money troubles become a thing of the past. Maybe for the rest of your life. Sounds interesting. So, will you help me out? Agreed. 
If I get to Kraz, though, I'll deal with your dilemma. Great, okay. So the Chamber of Commerce building is in the center of the city. It's a huge building made of brick. It's huge, I tell you. You can't miss it. Inside, you'll find a trader named Alexander Sablin. He was my friend and helped me till the last. He was the only one who didn't turn his back on me. Please talk to him. He'll help me out, I'm sure of it. And something tells me that that guy... What's his name? Alexander was the guy that betrayed you. Just... I'm throwing that out there. Now, the trader snatches the map out of your hands and puts a neat cross mark on it. Apparently where Krasno is located. So, I need to go to Krasno, find the Chamber of Commerce, and talk to some guy named Sablin. I need to think this over. Talk to you later. Some more questions, my man. Uh, how's life in the village? Full of hopes and dreams. No, seriously. I feel there's great potential in this place. What it needs is some laborers and building materials. Do you know that this place used to have a huge metalworking plant and a coal refinery nearby? It was very industrial. But any progress is stopped by the local crime bosses. On the other hand, the local population is pretty apathetic, although nice and kind. They dig in the dirt all day long, but never stop to look at the stars. They have no commerce in their veins. Alright, I see. I'll ask something else. Have you heard any good rumors lately? One of my relatives is a caravan driver. He works everywhere from the Red Partisan area to the Khrushchev Badlands. Well, he told me that there's this abandoned town plagued by some strange anomalies. Seems if you stay there for the night, you'll have terrible nightmares. Worse, on the top stories of buildings, green lights can be seen, and people hear voices. That's not even the scariest part yet. He told me that his caravan had this boy as part of the crew. So one day he comes up to my relative and asks his pal, says his pal is calling him into the basement because he found some pre-war tins there. Well, my relative gave his okay to the kid and then forgot about it. But the kid, he never came back. He's been missing ever since. So some men from the crew go down into that basement the kid was talking about. They found only a fresh pool of blood, and that's it. The man who the boy thought was calling him from the basement wasn't even near the place they, the day before. Some believe that Hellspawns are living in that city now. Some others think it's home to guests from the stars. But I think this story is a great example of why you should buy a gun. Who would have known? Uh, can I ask something else? Alright, that's it. Can I keep just trying that? Alright. Well, I got a brick. Let's equip it. Some enhancement to my, uh... Melee attack. Do you have a bucket on his head? No, it's a hat. He's a solid, bent, thin, but otherwise well-built middle-aged man. He's dressed in a dusty lab coat with the sleeves rolled up and a cloth hat of peculiar shade of gray. Yes? Uh, you must be the local doctor. Bullseye, young man. Dr. Megoyan at your service. But you may simply call me Constantine. Spelled differently. Uh, I need your help, doctor. Dr. McCoyan checks your pulse, your blood pressure, even your irises. He finally steps away, looking disappointed. You're already healthy, young man. Please, visit me only if there's a true a true emergency. Can you have a free checkup these days? That's good, I better leave. Eh, whatever. Dr. Constantine looks deeply occupied as he writes something down in a large old book. Upon seeing you, he puts his sharpie away and crosses his hands across his chest. I'd like to buy some drugs. What do you got? Antidote. So I lose strength for 30 minutes, but I get 7 to 11 health and addiction. Okay. Oh, that's a that's a jest towards the Fallout series. Wasteland dwellers used to still use the pre-war rubles. There was a dispute about using soda caps for currency. But this idea kind of died. All right, well, let's see. Um, listen, how about a small discount on all the drugs I buy? Oh no, you don't, young man. I'm no merchant to haggle with. Go visit our trader and haggle with him if you must. Not yeah, worth a try. Let's ask him some questions. Uh, young man, I am a doctor, not a criminal under interrogation. But if you must, ask away. Now, how's the job? Intense. How do you like that reply? Intense? Very much so. I don't really know what to expect the next day. 
It's either stop doing your job altogether, or try to cope, since this world throws me something new each day. New strains of radiation poisoning, spontaneous mutations. Sometimes I have to, have to stitch up bite marks made by jaws never seen by a medical specialist before the war. Sometimes I get a patient that puts all my years of medical experience under question just by the way he looks. Or rather, by the way the mushrooms grow out of his back. Or, by the way the mushrooms growing out of his back look. Wow, the life of a communist doctor sounds pretty harsh, Doc. Young man. Okay, whatever. Uh, tell me about yourself. It's nice to listen to a smart person from time to time. I'm one of the original residents of this place. Been here ever since the collapse. Nothing else is special about my biography, though. And thank God for that. Very concise, Doc. Good for you. Let's ask some more questions. Uh, how's life? Young man, I'm a doctor, not some bard perched on a wall, strumming, strumming my lute and uh, cotter walling about the idyllic village green. You'd be better served by just knowing that life here is pretty calm, and as much as it can ever be calm in our world. The commune tends to, tends to my needs, compensates me for my labor, and I don't really get that many patients anymore. In the old days, there were floods of the sick and the mutilated at my door every day. The doctor looks over at a thick folder on his desk labeled death certificates. Alright, another question. Have you heard any rumors? Young man, I'm a doctor, not the village gossip, but... But I do hear some strange rumors from time to time. For example, I heard that in our tavern, the proprietor adds toadstools to some of the spirits. Never touch the stuff myself, and I highly recommend you do likewise, young man. The effects of this witch's brew might be unpredictable. Thanks for the advice. Alright, well, um... So I don't know how to sneak either. The hunger's in the red, I don't know... Can I take this stuff? Okay, he didn't like... I couldn't take that stuff. Can I sneak behind him? I don't know how to sneak. Or if I even can. Um, mm -hmm. Let's try to figure it out. Nope, not what I meant to do. Oh, I have an ability tree. Okay. 10% discounts everywhere. Plus 10 survival. It says 0 out of 1. Oh, never mind. Alright, so I just need to level up for that. Still interested in how to sneak. Um, no, maybe I should just go find food. Because I know I'm in red hunger. And I don't know exactly what that entails. Who are you? Talk to me. Before you stands a shortish woman with a kindly face. She's wearing a simple dress. On her head is a linen headscarf, which she wears like a bandana of sorts. Howdy, can I ask you some questions? The woman gives you a warm smile and eagerly nods. It seems she would love to chat. Warm howdy to you too, young man. Ask all the questions you want. Uh, how's life out here? Good. Well, at least I think so. Some of the people are grumpy, like my husband, for example. They say it's no way to live with all them bandits and with all them bandits and constant drought. But that's just their survival instinct speaking. In reality, other villages have it far worse than us. It's easy, it's easy and fun to live in Otra Denoi. Denoi. If you're not scared of manual labor, that is. You got that right. Can I ask something else? Sure thing. Tell me about yourself. Oh, there's so much to tell. Well, before the war, I was a history teacher in the village school. I love history, though I've forgotten much of it. And I love kids. It's just sad how they grow up so fast. Me and my husband, by the way, we have three sons. They're grown men nowadays. Each went away his own way. The older one and the second one probably forgot us already. They never visit. Both of them living in Krasno. I sure would love to know what they do for a living, though. Back when he visited me, I asked my eldest son, What's your job in the city? Does it pay well? He just mumbled something like, Keep calm, mother. Everything is fine. Same story with my other son. They probably got that attitude from their father. He's also the silent type. My youngest, on the other hand, he took after me. He's all smiles, you know, and he loves to chat, but I'm worried silly about him. He has a caravan guard, you know. I always nag him about it. I tell him to go live with his siblings in the big city. He just laughs it off. Stubborn, just like his old dad. Uh, that's okay. 
And what's new around the village? There's always something new in the village. Sometimes a cow gives birth. At other times, the water tower stops working. We've also got a trader who just recently came to live here, right from the Krasno city. The woman approaches you and whispers in your ear secretively. And also recently, our tech specialist disappeared. He's one hell of a drunkard. Sometimes he gets on such crazy binges, it becomes scary. But this time, I'm sure he didn't disappear because of his bad habit. I think it's because he was bragging his last days in the village. Bragging about becoming... She stares around before saying, Becoming a millionaire. Quite the mystery, that, right? Sounds like something Sherlock Holmes would try to solve. <laughs> sure thing. I uh, Heard any rumors? I heard from the other gals that there's this place called Algir. It's sunny all year long, you know. And there's a woman-only women only resort built there. Wow. Must be amazing to get some rest in such a lovely place. It's just that my husband would never let me go. And even if he would, I would not trust him with the household for the time I'd be away. Even if it's just a week. Now that's a trust issue. Can I ask something else? Alright. I like how when I'm done asking questions, my guy always has like this sassy response, but they never respond to it. And before you stands a tough, hard-looking man aged around 45. He's wearing an old sunburnt shirt with short sleeves and hardy work pants. It's hard not to notice a wide black mustache on his strict face. Hey there, can I ask you some more questions? The, the man eyes you mo moodily. He seems tense, but your charisma seems to put him more at ease. He lets his guard down and suddenly looks more shy than strict. Ask away. Uh, how's life out here? It's an okay living. We work hard and never dawdle. Alright, uh, tell me about yourself. At first the man seems not to trust you, but later, and mostly because you made a good first impression, he lets his guard down a bit. Okay. I'm a simple man. I work a lot, and I wish everyone would be like that. Work keeps all the bad thoughts away, and lets you sleep better. Before the war, I worked a tractor on a communal farm. After the war, I didn't really switch to a new profession. It's just that I don't get to have a tractor anymore. I work with my hands in the fields. Well, that's sad to hear. Alright, what's new around the village? If there's anything new, I'd tell you. Things tend to stay the same around here. Well, that's good in a way. I heard any rumors? They say there's a co some cult in Krasno, city that helps honest folk. Sounds great, right? Still, I don't trust that kind of charity. Maybe I'm wrong about them, but it seems they have some sort of agenda. A shady agenda. Alright, anything is possible. And sorry if uh, this isn't super exciting, but if uh, games like Fallout taught me anything, it's that you should always be thorough. Alright, I don't know what that did. Um, if I turned on an engine. Salt, waste paper, and some spoons. Before you stands a hearty woman with a strict, large featured face. She has an apron on over her dress. Hello, can I ask you some questions? Willow puts her hands on her hips and nods toward you. Just make it quick. Uh, how's life out here? What kind of question is that? Like anywhere else. We work, we work again, and then we work some more. Not unlike anyone else. Maybe even better than some. Around these parts, anyone will stay the same. Alright, another question. Uh, tell me about yourself. Curious, aren't we? I tend to the household. My husband guards the village treasury. What else is there to say? Well, before the war, I had a field and a garden of my very own. Nowadays, I'm not much of an entrepreneur. I'm not a young girl anymore, after all. But my love for my work is still there, keeping me going every day. Alright, well, I got your point. Would I ask her this? Oh, yeah, I already asked her that. Uh, what's new around the village? Okay, I guess. And there's the main problem. If anyone asked, I didn't say it. But I think that our head, Comrade Kavalov, should retire. In his best years, he was quite the man. You could say he built this village himself. But his age shows, more and more with each passing day. He can't cope with it all like he used to. Why, just a few years ago, he wanted to build a vineyard. Or vineyard. But some sea buy some seeds from the traveling rate traders, build the arbors, and then the but then the project just stopped at its tracks. First, it was too arid, then the bandits came. The woman shakes her head. Either he names a successor, or we have an election. What we have now, it can't last forever. That's what I think, anyway. I see. Uh, any rumors? I don't trust no rumors, especially those about the radiation that some people love to spread around. 
Radiation is the enemy, sure, but you need to know your enemy, not make up facts about it like Victor Pelminiev from the Gosplins village does. One time he had this story about talking ants. After that, he saw a six-fingered chicken. Those who believe his tall tales will live in fear. But those who, but those who will see that the teller is nothing but a mentally ill person will become more sober about this world we live in. Good for them, I say. All right. Well, that was an exhilarating conversation. There's another guard. Uh, before you stands a young man in pre-war military uniform, a uh, shirt. In his hands, you see an automatic rifle. On his shoulder hangs an old R-147 army radio. He looks at you expectantly. Can I ask you some questions? The man sniffs and brushes greasy hair back with the palm of his hand. He eyes you warily, a look of discontentment on his perceptive in his perceptive eyes. Let's hear it. Uh, any work to be had in the village? I don't know. If you want an honest job, speak with the people. Someone will probably hire you. If you're really looking for honest work, that is. If not, you better leave right now. Uh, sad to hear? Okay. Uh, how's life? The man inspects you carefully. Why so interested? Uh, just curious. We live fine. Pretty poor, though. No money. No fancy stuff. If you don't like that, you better get out. He crosses his arms over his chest and looks at you with poorly hidden challenge in his eyes. If he wants to fight, I'll fight. Uh, tell me about yourself. I guard this gate under orders of the head. That is all you need to know about me. I'm not some fool who blabs about himself to a stranger. Uh, then tell me about the head. A curious fella, ain't you? I'll be brief. The head is the main man in this in this place. Where he is now and what he is doing is not for me to know, and not for you to know either. Uh, who are you guarding the gate from? A crooked smile appears on the man's face. You kidding? You kidding, or is that a trick question? Look around. We live in the middle of the wastes. Here, even a blade of grass wants to kill you. Who am I guarding the gate from? Jeez. All right, don't get mad. I heard any good rumors lately? I didn't hear anything, although I did see something. There are weird critters nesting around the village. Someone really needs to stop them out. But until then, if you don't value your life too much, you can go through that gate and pick some mushrooms. What kind of mushrooms? You never heard? A village is famous for its mushrooms. Hell if I know why, but they grow everywhere around here. It's pretty dry in these parts, but they still grow. When it rains, sometimes they even pop up on bare rocks. Alright, well, uh, let's go. Well, he's, he's a friendly guy. Alright, let's uh, check out in here. An old man in a skullcap does what he always does. He opens and closes his toothless mouth, whistling some forgotten melody. Upon seeing you, he squints his eyes at you. Hello there, Shunny. You want to speak about something? Uh, just getting to know the locals. What? Oh, the locals. Well, here I am. A local through and through. Heh <laughs> Did they send you to help me out, so Shunny? Uh, not really. What did you want? Ashamed to ask, Shunny. I have this little corn patch at the back of my house. I picked the corn myself, but I'm just too old now. My back is killing me. What harvest could I pick like that? The old man gives out a sad sigh. It must be very hard for him to ask someone for help. Fine, old man. I'm gonna do it. See you later. Why am I saying it with an attitude? I guess it's this he wants me to pick. Oh, and a shovel? That'll come in handy, right? Supposedly there's that treasure I can dig up with a shovel. Uh, picked your corn, old man. <laughs> oh, a real worker you are. Really helped out an old man. The old guy feels his pockets, looks his house over, and finally turns to you with despair in his eyes. It's just that I don't have any money to pay you. What a shame. I was a hunter back before, before, you know, and I always had the money, the monies. But now, what a shame. Shame on you, old man. Acted like a true exploiter. Uh, maybe you could look around some more, old man. Every little bit helps. The old man does not listen to you. Finally, a smile comes to his face and he slaps his forehead. What a fool I am, Shunny. I was a hunter, wasn't I? Shed it myself, and I didn't get it. Wait here, Shunny. The old man gets on his knees and starts searching under his rickety bed. Finally, he pulls out his old shotgun with a smile he hands it to you. Here, I don't really need it no more. Just to scare away the crows, I, su I suppose. But you might find it useful. 
So here you go. Well, thanks a lot, old man. It's just what I needed. You take the gun out of the old man's hands and look it over with interest. It's an old hunting carbine. On its wooden stock is an engraving. A heart pierced by an arrow. Old hunting rifle. I can't use it because I don't have 35 and uh, stuff. I wish I knew how to sneak. I still haven't figured that out yet. I only have 33 stealth anyway, but... I need to find something to eat. Can I talk to this guy about anything else? Oh, he wants... Okay, questions. How's life, old man? How's life, you ask? It's okay, Shunny. I never pelt. Hands and legs are still working fine, so it's a sin to get all mopey. People also help me out some, and I try to help him back as well as I can. The old man laughs, rubbing his blistered hands together as if he's cold. I just thought those bandits mesh with us all the time. It's so hard to read his dialogue. All the time. Have we tried to get rid of them, but they're still coming. I got one word for them. Insulin. Alright, let's ask something else. Uh, tell me about yourself. What's there to say? I'm a simple man. I lived through so many wars that I can't even count them all. Lived until such an age, I have no more friends. Even my wife died. God bless her soul. Even though I don't believe in God. Ha ha ha. Attention. The old man seems to avoid talking about his life between the wars, but mentions it enough that you suspect he wants to. And how did you earn your money in peacetime, old man? Har, if you're so interested. Heh, I'll tell you a secret. I was a hunter. Well, not a hunter. More of a poacher. I hunted in reservations and in game reserves. Anywhere the rare game went, I went. The old man flaps his toothless mouth, but his eyes, you notice, start glowing, as though recalling his memories has filled him with the vigor of his youth. Yeah, I brought meat to the market. I sold hides to the tourists. I got horns to all of all them. Collectors. So they put them on walls in their flatch. Now half of those great beasts have disappeared from the woods. It's a real pity, you know. I'm not to blame, I know that. But sometimes I feel like I exterminated all them critters. Many sins are on my old head, Shunny. And that makes me sad. The old man suddenly becomes very sad. You remember that old folks are very sentimental at times. And don't be sad, old man. You know what might help? If you tell me about your hunting and traveling techniques. Passing wisdom to the next generation and all that. The old man livens up. In his eyes, you see the spark again. Ho, ho, ho. You want some teaching from old man Semyon? Sure, I'll teach you. Why not? You open your, you open your ears, Shunny, and listen. I won't remember all of it, but something something I'll tell you might help you out on the road. You're so tan, you must travel a lot. Haha. -ha. The old man coughs and then starts telling you how to build a small furnace from a tin can, how to make some aspirin from a willow tree, and how to create compasses and spoons out of tree bark and other handy materials. So five survive. Oh, okay, that's cool. He then even tells you how to boil water in a simple hat. It's not as instructive as learning on your own, but most of his advice is really useful. That's just stuff, Shunny. See? This old poacher still has some fire left in him. Uh, thank you, old man. Now I need to think on all that information. Uh, what can you tell me about the village? What's there to tell about it? It's nice to live in your old age around here, but it's pretty sad that all the young people moved out. Yep, looking for work, or for some adventure. But the village is dying. Even an old-timer like me will probably live longer than it does. Only old folks around here. Eh. Kavalov, our head, is a nice guy. A smart guy. He'll never harm an old man. But the so-called superintendent, Grankin. Before the war, people avoided men like him. But I had my dealings wish him before the bomb. He was an official back then. I needed to bribe him all the time so that he'd keep quiet about what I was doing. Sure, I wasn't such a shaint myself. But he was a, but he was a sellout. A corrupt official. I don't take kindly to folk like him. Still don't. I think it's because of them this whole war nonsense happened. I'd bet on it. Interesting. Now, what's the rumors around town? Don't really listen to what people say. Not my thing. Just more worries. That's all it can bring. Someone always gets killed or cut up somewhere. Once I heard a whole community nearby got burned to the ground. How's that for a positive rumor? Alright, well I got a shotgun. And I got some survival uh, points. All right, they're sleeping. I want to try and steal from them while they're sleeping. What's herbal mix do? Make tea from it. Drinking it could be dangerous. And waste paper. I 
I got soap. Okay. I'm not gonna... Well, yeah, let's wake him up. Now that I've stolen everything. Before he stands an old woman leaning on a cane. She's wearing a black dress and a black headscarf. Under her black eyebrows hide her black eyes, still sharp and revealing the glimmer of youth. Hello, can I ask you some questions? I'm listening. You know what? I think I'm going to call the episode here. I'm going to finish talking to the generic NPCs, I think. Uh, I might go out here where this other guy was and start looking for the, um, the treasure he was talking about. I don't think I ever went in his building either, did I? There's probably stuff in there I can steal. But yeah, since a lot of this is a little repetitive, I probably won't continue to do this in every episode. I'll talk to people off camera and um, look for quests. So I still have two buildings, three... No, I went in there. I have one, two buildings left to go in after this one. I don't know, but in games like this, it isn't important to talk to everybody. Because as you saw, I got some survival points for free and a shotgun just by talking to that guy. Uh, but yeah, games like this, it's always important to to talk to everyone. Get all the dialogue options. Some nails. Okay, well, I'll take that. But yeah, we're going to call it here in the next episode. We'll probably finish talking to everybody and then um, start looking for quests. I know it's not super exciting right now. And I do apologize. Games like this start off a little slow, but they, they pick up pretty quick. Anyway, thanks for watching, and I hope to see y'all in the next episode.